What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 C2 idioms. You can use them both in your speaking exam and in your informal writing. I recommend writing down these idioms in your vocabulary notebook. You can have one section for idioms. And I think it's a great idea to include one simple sentence. Are you ready? If so, grab a notebook and a pen and let's kick off. So the first idiom we're going to learn today is to come under fire. It means to be strongly criticized and to receive criticism. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, the government came under fire for raising the self-employment tax. And one more example, the actor came under fire for his latest performance. Now let's move on to our second idiom, to stand your ground. It means to refuse to change your opinion or your decision when people around you are trying to make you change your mind. It has a positive context. And now a few examples. The first example is about what happened in the second season of Virgin River. And it was when Jack told Mel, I think you should stand your ground and not give your engagement ring to your sister-in-law. And one more example, she was brave to stand her ground in the meeting. Let's continue. Our idiom number three is to be in the public eye. It means to be very famous and well-known and to be exposed to a lot of attention and scrutiny. The opposite of to be in the public eye is to be out of the public eye. And now, a few examples. The first one, being in the public eye must be exhausting and rather stressful. And one more example, they want to keep their children out of the public eye. Let's move on to our fourth idiom, to work around the clock, or we can also say to work around the clock. It can have two meanings. The first one is literal. It means to work and be busy all day and all night, 24 hours in a row. And the second meaning is to work very hard, but not necessarily 24 seven. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, she was weary after having worked round the clock in the hospital. The adjective weary means to be exhausted and very tired. And one more example about me. I've been working round the clock lately. Let's continue. Our idiom number five is very common and it's to get the hand of something. It means to learn how to do something, especially something not simple or obvious. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, imagine you're showing someone the ropes. You can say, don't worry, you'll get the hang of it in a few days. And one more example, it takes some time to get the hang of editing. And guys, before we continue and learn five more C2 idioms, just a tiny reminder, please make sure you're subscribed to English Bits and your bell icon is on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. Thank you. And now let's continue with our lesson, our idiom number six, a roof over your head. It means a place to live. And now a few examples. The first one, the rent is too high. Hence why a lot of people struggle to keep a roof over their head. And one more example, we take so many things for granted instead of appreciating them. 
feeling grateful for a roof over your head is a good starting point to begin developing a sense of gratitude. And guys, I really recommend checking out Headspace on Netflix. It's about meditation and each episode of this series of programs focuses on one technique and the technique that helps you develop this sense of gratefulness is called the reflection technique. Personally, I'm trying to work on this sense of gratitude and at the end of the day, when I'm in bed, I try to think of three things that I'm grateful for. They can be things that happened this day or in general. Let's continue our idiom number seven, to have a soft spot for someone. It means to have a lot of affection for someone, to admire and like another person. And now, a few examples. The first one, I've always had a huge soft spot for Taylor Swift. If you want, you can add huge before soft to intensify it even more. And one more example, Lord Mountbatten had a soft spot for Prince Charles. I've just finished watching The Crown and now I have more knowledge about the British royal family. Let's continue number eight, a drop in the ocean, or we can also say a drop in the bucket. It means a very small amount compared to what is needed. And now, two examples. The first one, the government aid for the hospitality industry is just a drop in the ocean. If you want, you can add just, just a drop in the ocean. And one more example, we should do our bit to protect the environment, even if it's a drop in the ocean. Tomorrow to go, number nine, the tip of the iceberg. It means to know a very small part of the problem. It's because we can only see the tip of the iceberg and the main part of it and the biggest part is under the water and can be seen. And now a few examples. The first one, she only told us that one thing about her childhood. If you ask me, that was just the tip of the iceberg. If you want, you can also use just before the tip of the iceberg. And one more example, when the officers began to dig a bit deeper, they discovered the speeding fine was just the tip of the iceberg. And last but not least, a very beautiful idiom that I like a lot, to be out of this world. It means to be extremely good, impressive and wonderful. And now, two examples. The first one, your homemade pumpkin donut is out of this world. It means it's delicious. And last but not least, Bali is out of this world. I really loved this island. It's such a beautiful and relaxing place because of its friendly people, green rice fields, lush vegetation and a completely different culture. I'd really like to go back. And you? Have you been to Bali? So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned some new idioms. If there was an idiom you didn't know, or simply liked a lot, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more C2 idioms, check out the previous editions right here. And of course, if you enjoyed this lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. It's very inspiring and encouraging. Remember to subscribe to English Bits and catch me on Instagram and do my daily quiz and learn some daily vocabulary. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!